man, how is how is old Lukey Dukey doing? <laughs> oh man, he good. He good. That's my man. That's my <laughs> man for real. You know, he always are... cool, just laid back as up, chilling always. He chilling till he not chilling. Yeah. Listen, he chilling till he not chilling. Oh yeah, nah, he get hyped. He definitely get hyped. With you. <laughs> Hey, Road Trippin' fam. We are excited to let you know that Road Trippin' is proud to be presented by FanDuel. Never played NBA Daily Fantasy on FanDuel before? Well, check this out. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Why should you play on FanDuel NBA? Well, for one, it is easy to use when it comes to their app. What's not to love about that? But also, for example, they offer different and unique contests across sports in relation to your skill level. Oh yeah, and get this, you can play for big prizes, single game contests for the biggest national matches, and enter contests for as low as five cents. That's right, five cents. Simply incredible. So again, let's recap. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Enter URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping to play now and get your deposit bonus. That's URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping so they know we sent you. FanDuel, more ways to win. Guys, Channing Fry here. Let me tell you about something that has completely transformed my outside experience. I live in the Pacific Northwest. I love hiking. I love camping. I love being outside on those cool summer nights. And the best thing that I've discovered that I found is the solo stove. This thing is amazing. We have one by the pool. So we want to go in the pool at night. People can be roasting marshmallows. And guess what? You're not going to be covered in smoke. This thing is smokeless. Okay. This thing comes with a free stand which also helps with the maneuverability of it. it. We take it everywhere. We've been camping with this thing. We've been out in front of our house with this thing with friends, social distancing. But one thing I want you to remember is make spring one to remember with the smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove and get a free stand with any purchase of a fire pit. Just use our promo code ROADTRIPPING at checkout. That's solostove.com, promo code ROADTRIPPING. Hey everybody, Richard Jefferson here. Let me first tell you, when I retired, I didn't really have a ton of suits, but I got into broadcasting. What was I thinking? And now suits are mandatory. But I made a decision that I wasn't just going to wear suits, I was gonna wear suits that looked good. With so many crazy things going on this year, everything has been postponed. Weddings, anniversaries, reunions, and hopefully gender reveal parties. It may have been a while since the last time you had an excuse to dress up, but when you do get a chance, you have to check out Indochino. Now you can visit a showroom or you can do it online like me. Now look, I'm more of a meat and potatoes guy, but there is a ton of things that you can customize your clothing. And when I think of customized clothing, you know what I think of? I think of Deion Sanders because he so famously said, when you look good, you feel good. When you feel good, you play good. And when you play good, they pay good. Indochino offers completely customized fitted suits, shirts, casual wear, and more at surprisingly affordable prices. Every piece is made to your exact measurement and you can customize every detail. Choose everything about your suit from the fabric, the lapel, the monogram, and statement linings. You can create a suit that fits you and your style perfectly. Cheers. I see that Channing, you are drinking, which is nice. I appreciate it. I have, to pick, I, have, I have to pick up my son. We don't promote drinking and driving here. Cheers. <laughs> Welcome into this edition of Road Trip and presented by FanDuel. I'm your host, Ali Clifton, alongside Channing Fry, Richard Jefferson. And we all have a connection with our guest today because we just talked about it. Um, he is a center power forward, plays multiple positions. Channing, what do you call? He's the guy with a lot of bounce. Oh, he got bounce. He, he got plays for the Sacramento he, Kings. He probably is the meanest dunker. His mom yelled at me on Twitter. <laughs> Oh mom, no! His mom yelled at me on Twitter. This all is, the kings, yeah, yeah she all did. The does your mom? Does, does your mom? Does your mom? Does your mom often do that? Does she defend her baby boy? Because my mom does. My mom oh, is that my, mom. My mom defends me like no other. I mean, yes. like I said, I'm sure you understand. But yeah, oh yeah, mom, I completely understand. Anything negative, anything that she don't like, my mom is like. It used to be really bad when I was in Philly. Like she didn't really calm down. Nah. Okay, it, it good. Because you know how the fans in Philly are. Yeah, oh, you're not gonna so win that battle, mom. But mom, she sent like I I was cracking a joke. You know what? I was I was doing your guys's game. 
I cracked uh, a joke about you shooting in three. And I was like, yeah, that's a preseason shot. Like, you know, you probably, you know, get him up in the preseason. You might not want to shoot that with 18 on the clock. I know he's been working on it, but like, no. And then moms tweeted at me. What kind of nonsense is that? What player is not going to work? So she hit with facts. It wasn't just yeah, like, super like facts. what type of player is not going to work on his game and try and get better. And I was like, mom, that's, that, that's not what I was saying. But like, <laughs> I don't know if this is a platform for that. Oh, man. That, that, all she sees is, man, maybe he shouldn't have took that shot. And she's, man, she's going <laughs> ready to go in. Always. She's always on go, but. That's my mom. I love it. We <laughs> love it, man. My mom was the same way. So we 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 all get it, dude. We all get oh, it. Yo, definitely. yo, but you played on. I remember you were that energy mean guy always came out to bitch. I hated, and no offense, I hated garbage time versus you because you got <laughs> one motor, right? You got oh, one speed. Man. And I go in and hey, there's garbage time etiquette, right? For the vets. <laughs> it's gonna take me if we got one minute. I'm going to give you all the jumpers. That's three possessions, right? One, two, three. Shoot all the jumpers you want. No, you screen and rolling, <laughs> trying to put me on a poster in the last 40 seconds. I was like, hey, yo, etiquette. This is, I'm not even warm. I don't want to take a shower. I took a shower half time. <laughs> Knowing damn well I'm not going to play. This is ridiculous. <laughs> oh, man. But you've evolved like Philly, Phoenix, now here in, in Sacramento, and it's been a rough season for you guys, obviously, with injuries and stuff. But covering it, everybody on in Atlanta who works with TNT is like has the highest praise for you because of your consistency of like effort. And again, that aggression is hard to be aggressive every single night. And I feel like you try to embarrass people. If you get that running screen, <laughs> I'm like, you got to make a business decision. Do I want to get my fingers broke if I try to block it or do I? I take a charge. Like, how did that evolve for you? Oh, uh, man, for, for me, honestly, like, being the youngest out of four boys, it's always a chip on your shoulder every day because, like, man, I was getting beat up from, I mean, I don't know how young. Like, <laughs> my brothers are big, so, you know what I'm saying? When I first started trying to play basketball, I was trying to play against them. So everything had to just be tough hard like everything I had to take it because they showed me no sympathy at all like my brothers tried to embarrass me on the court every time I played no matter how young I was every time we played they tried to embarrass me so I can I kind of just picked up the attitude for real like if I'm going into the hole I'm gonna make sure nobody's gonna take it from me because I'm gonna get clowned by them still to this day if somebody takes my rock so like I just gotta uh -huh. You know, it's that same attitude for real. Like, I'm playing against them every time I step on the floor almost. Yeah, see, Channing never had that because he was the older brother. He's seven feet tall, and his younger oh, yeah, brother see. is <laughs> five foot ten, yeah, right? So it's like there's never – so, so, look, at the end of the day, it's like, dude, I am the youngest of three boys also. And even though my brothers okay. didn't play ball – like you – I understand. Like, you got – you're the last one to eat. You're the last one to – Oh, eat. man. Like they you don't get to pick no, the plate every time. yeah. They don't get to yeah. take any. You don't get to like watch any, pick the movies. You don't Man. get anything. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I think that's why both that, of you guys are athletes, and I'm the skill player. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm like, hey, listen, y'all keep that down there. I'm gonna be out here. Just let me be. Hey man, I wish I could get the tray ball you had. Though I wish I could give it time. If I, give if it I time. Have one tenth of your bounce, I'd be a billionaire. Yeah. What year is this for you? <laughs> what year is what year is this for you? Rashawn. It's year six. Year six. Year six. Channing oh, didn't start God. shooting threes till what year, Channing? Year six. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Give it time. Give, just keep working you. on it. Keep working on it. Make sure your mom. Make sure your mom hears the podcast. And knows. <laughs> <laughs> I would make. I would, I would make sure she definitely gonna be peeping. Oh, okay. Good. Okay, listen, Rashawn. What did your did your brothers play sport? Sports? Did you? All well, my brothers like we love playing basketball growing up, and they played like throughout well, high school for real. So okay, all the way up until that time, I was kind of the punching bag, the practice dummy. You know, they want to work on new moves and different things like that. They 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 covered that <laughs> me. So <laughs> that was that was my job for a while. Yeah, it's, a, it's amazing. The youngest, the youngest ones, man. The youngest, you'd be surprised how many of the youngest make it because they had to play against older siblings. The mellow the ball. Um, it, it means a lot. Like, play, playing against people that are better than you, man, it, it, it's, it, it can't be, like, untold for real. Like, it, it takes a lot to overcome that. It's hard. Once you can't overcome like that, that, your confidence is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you go all of a sudden playing against kids your age, and you're like, oh, this is easy. Oh, for oh, sure. Oh, weak. For sure. 
<laughs> um, are you healthy? I know you left last night's game. For those that are listening, this will drop on Monday. So on Thursday, you left with knee soreness. Oh, uh, yeah. Just like having like some, like a little knee soreness right now. So Temper's I'm, knee? I get it. Me yeah, too. so we 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 taking it like day by day, trying to see like ah, tendonitis. Oh. Like <laughs> Will you shut up and let him tell the story? <laughs> nah, that, that that's facts though. That 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 jump is the is it. So, but yeah, no, nah, I'm just trying to you know just trying to get healthy, staying in the treatment room. And you know, I'm definitely gonna try to play if I can for sure. I, I, don't, I hate sitting out. I hate sitting out. Uh, is it because of the conditioning you have to do if you sit out? <laughs> that oh was, man, that was my reasoning. Yeah. I was like, "Fuck this!" Yeah, now that's the running. worst part. You got to do way more. You got to work harder, way harder than everybody else. Playing the game is the easy, fun part. <laughs> it's the word. The game is forty-eight minutes, and you may play thirty-five of them. If you yeah. don't play, they run in you like you play forty-eight. I'm like, "Oh man, be in shape for twenty minutes a game." I get <laughs> not forty-eight, they see it. twenty, just twenty. Oh, that was the number one thing to uh, not be injured is because you didn't want to do the conditioning. Oh, man. Like, dude, wait, I can play 12 minutes a night and not have to do any conditioning, but if I miss one game, I got to do an hour worth of conditioning? Like, what kind of shit is that? It's tough. It's tough. You know, I mean, you that first bus and you working out the whole time until the game is over with, just about. (laughs) That's all the game is over with. Let's, okay, let's talk. Let's talk the Kings. Obviously, I think Uh outside, no one knows it better than you. These two talk the game obviously. So they, they have their perspective. Um, and you guys have two games left. You are an unrestricted free agent this summer. You've expressed interest about returning uh, to the Kings, but what, it, how would you describe the season that you guys have had? I mean, I feel like it was, it was very inconsistent. You know, we, we had a lot of injuries as we, as we went and we were able to put together great stretches, honestly, like we put together, we were running like eight out of nine, and then we are going to lose a streak of nine, you know, so it was very, very up and down. But we, you know, had some high moments, low moments. But, you know, we, we've been together throughout the whole thing and, uh, you know, still competing. So, yeah, no, I want to know. I want to know the truth. <laughs> no, no don't tell us. The because, no, because, no, the reason why we got to talk about family. OK, so I saw your mom come at me on Twitter, not upset because my mom would have done the same thing. Uh, but like, what is it when you see? you know, just different interactions between teammates, like parents on Twitter. Like, I know that that doesn't always necessarily involve the locker room. Like Lonzo Ball is one of the most popular guys, you know, yeah. with, with wherever he's at, because he's just such a good dude, even though his dad, LeVar, is special, right? Because right. we don't take it out. But like, what, like, what is it when you see guys like De'Aaron Fox or you see these other guys like, uh, like Marvin Bagley, when you see a little bit of a beef going on in that world? Like, how do you guys handle that internally? Because I know the yeah. basketball world is curious. I mean, honestly, for us, it was funny. <laughs> like, I mean, for real, like, it's like these, this locker room is the most jokesters I've ever seen probably on one team. Like, it's a joke about everything. Like, I'm serious. And to us, like, it was probably like a one, two-time conversation about it. And everybody's cracking jokes about it. Everybody's laughing. The Aaron's laughing. Marvin's laughing. And, like, that's just how we take everything. Like, everything we take, everybody's joking about it. And it was just hilarious to us, for real. What are you saying, Richard? Did you mute yourself? Damn, no, I actually mute myself. I was sitting here, like, look at this shit. This shit, listening to it was so funny. Oh, so funny. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it's no. not like that's the first time it's happened. I think, you know, from the outside in, Marvin Bagley, and I'll specifically talk about him, is that guy that's always like, what position is he? What does he do? And then like he was supposed to be De'Aaron Fox's Batman or Robin, right? And and to me, he's with his injuries, the team has gone in a different direction because when you're injured, they can't rely on you on a consistent basis. Like think about the the Dallas Mavericks. Like Porzingis and, and Doncic's relationship isn't fluid, right? Because KP misses mm-hmm. so much time. But then you watch them in a bubble. They had time to practice together. They had time to like do stuff. They were looking great. And then KP got hurt again. So for me, um, just I think for your team, I think in today's game, if you don't have a dynamic four, right? And I say you're you're a six nine, six ten power dunker, power you know power forward center. 
but you need another guy where you can go four out one in where you roll to the hoop. You only have to deal with that bottom weak side guy. And I don't know if you guys have that spacing yet. And that's more of a GM thing than you guys. I like the makeup of your team. You're young, you're fast. I think when you guys get maybe one or two more defenders, like to keep the ball up, I think De'Aaron Fox is really good at defending, but he needs a a Patrick Beverly. He needs somebody who's like, Mm -hmm. I'm going to guard this dude since you're pushing the pace of us on on offense. Um, I think Halliburton is the steal of the draft. I think that, that, that dude got that like wiggle, which is like something you yeah. can't practice against. Like he got he got a weird game where I'm like, oh, this dude got <laughs> like the dude at the YMCA who never comes off the court. But you're like, how the hell did he just score that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like you got you got players. Harrison Barnes had a great year this year. Yeah. Shout out to my fantasy team. I actually lost to stupid Logan for a second place. But I think you guys are good. You just need two or three more pieces to be better. That's just um, most, yeah, no, nah, I, 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 de- I definitely agree with that. You know, I definitely agree with that. It's a, a lot of talent. And, you know, to speak to Marvin, you know, like I was looking like earlier this year, you know, he I, I can't remember what certain point, but he just like played his 82nd game. So, you yeah, know, he three just years made in, it. Yeah. Three, it's tough. A full season. You know what I'm saying? Like he that's yeah. like once like he's got one season of NBA games under his belt. So. You know, man, injuries is just, man. And and you can't ever get a comp, you can't get your confidence. You can't push as hard as you would like. Because, like, once you get your comp, it's like people are are so surprised about Derrick Rose playing the way he is. Well, this Mm -hmm. is like, this has been a great stretch for him of actually being healthy. So now he pushes it a little bit further, pushes a little bit further. And now he's really all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but you have seen this kind of rise coming over the last couple of years because there's been a consistency to help. You know, but that's where, you know, and again, we'll, we'll say this and we'll keep saying it. Yes, parents in sports, they can shift some things, but this is professional sports. Like yeah. this is not, this is not AAU. This is not college where I, my son's going to transfer. It's like, no, your son signed a contract and we're going to do what we please respectfully in mm-hmm. what's best for our team also. Yeah. Um, and it's just, I just don't think it ever helps. It never yeah. ever helps when parents are in that space. That's an agent's job. Let the agent definitely. be the ass. Let mm-hmm. let let the manager be the, like parents. And if you don't like what the if you don't like what the agent is doing, then fire the agent. Hire another agent and say, then get my son out of there. Get my right. son. Yeah, out most of there. definitely. You know. Most definitely. And so, hey, wild story. I was in Portland, and I was like, okay, this really is a wild not, story. Is this really going to be a wild this story? It's actually a very wild story. <laughs> Richard, mute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so, there we go there we go yes perfect keep it that way the whole shit hey so oh, shit. i was i had asked for a trade early because i was playing behind the marcus aldridge i was like yo this is my fourth year this is my contract year i need an opportunity and i knew that nate mcmillan's style wasn't mine about like shooting and facing up he wanted me to be more like joe prisbilla which ended up helping my career but so my parents are hot hot uh-huh. So we go play the Lakers in Staples Center. Rob Palenka is my agent. They're sitting in behind Paul Allen. My dad has a few drinks. Who starts cussing at Paul Allen? Let my oh. son go. Oh. He's like, you better f-ing stop it before I get you. If you don't trade my son, this is bullshit. Like security oh, had to get him. And I was like, oh, damn, that didn't help. But low key, Paul Allen didn't give a shit. No. He didn't give <laughs> a shit. I played out that whole year. Him and I were cool. I was cracking jokes with him. He was like, remember that day your dad cussed me out before he passed away? And I was like, yeah, yeah, well. He was like, hey, we're still not going to trade you. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm going to I'm gonna, I'm gonna add to your Paul Allen story just for people to understand like NBA and stuff. So what, a team called the Portland Trailblazers and was like, hey, this is our offer. This is our offer for this player, this draft pick. It's going to be like, you know, a second round pick, this player and cash. And they called back. Yeah. They're like, we don't do things for cash. And they were like, what do you like, Paul Allen's got all the money in the world. We want assets. <laughs> he doesn't care about more cash. Oh, well, we got 300 grand back. He's like, cool. That'll pay for the gas on my yacht this week. Like what? Like, <laughs> it wouldn't like, even cool. pay for the gas on his yacht. It wouldn't even pay for the it gas on his yacht. But it's just, it's just, his yacht. Yeah, Swear to it's God. just funny to hear how like teams will do business 
based off of their owners. Like, yeah, we don't, we only take second round picks, assets, players, but we don't take cash. Yeah, see, I, I got I, I got traded for cash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I think I think they said I got I got traded for like a, a fax machine and a Philly cheese steak. Yes. <laughs> what is up with that? Because that's the same thing that happened to Kyle Corver. And I think it was mixed in with Philly. Oh yeah, no, nah, they they man. They got a lot they, of faxes they they're sending out. Deals with cash, all dope. But Yo, yeah, but it's not you wouldn't have been traded to the Trailblazers for cash. You wouldn't have been traded to the Trailblazers for cash because Paul <laughs> Allen and the Trailblazers don't accept cash. We don't need it. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't need that. We're not, we're not money. We don't need money. Do you think know when uh, Diddy was that. throwing out the ones in his wallet? Like, oh, I don't keep these. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny to not funny. Like, I actually Allie, Allie really quickly. Yeah. Your mic is really high. Is anybody else? Is she really loud? Am I too else? high? Mic, mic, mic. Mic, mic, mic. One, two, one, two. When you start like projecting, then it gets loud. I just telling you. Okay. You use your big girl voice. It's too you need, loud for you need me to use my inside voice. Hey, Road Trip and fam. I just want to take a moment and talk about something new I'm adding to my hobby life, if you will. Coming from the Midwest, we live for the springtime weather. It means summer is right around the corner aka all that good weather. And ever since I was a little girl, I would spend all the hours of the day outside, usually ending it around a campfire. No joke. It was a great way to wind down, but then spend time with family and friends. Even when we'd be on vacation, the night always just seemed to end with a bonfire. So recently I came across Solo Stove, thought, hey, let's check it out. In fact, my parents did as well. What is a solo stove first and foremost? Well, it's a smokeless fire pit. Yes, smokeless. No walking away, feeling as if you are taking the fire with me. You know what I'm saying? And so a couple weekends ago, my parents and I actually FaceTimed as we unpackaged and put together our Ranger fire pits, which by the way, is so efficient and easy to do. It took us less than five minutes. One thing we came across when putting it together was this piece that we now know is probably very important. It's the fire pit stand. So no matter where you place it, because, oh yeah, by the way, it's portable. My parents, big into camping, are gonna take it with them on their trips. It creates this insulated barrier that protects any kind of surface, no matter what it is. It's made of 304 stainless steel, durable construction, and as I mentioned, efficient from the moment you open to porting it around wherever you see fit. And so here's the deal. Since we love so much you guys, we want to encourage our listeners to get in on the fun with Spring Upon Us and Summer Red Around the Corner. Do yourself a favor. Make this spring one to remember with a smokeless fire pit from Solo Stove and get a free stand, free, with any purchase of a fire pit. Just use our promo code ROADTRIPPIN at checkout. That's solostove.com, promo code ROADTRIPPIN, R-O-A-D-T-R-I-P-P-I-N. I think it's awesome to hear that like that's how the locker room handled it because obviously this day with social media, it was like, oh my God, this huge thing. So for you yeah. to like, you know, obviously give us that insight, but I can't help but think because obviously the way we started this podcast, um, your head coach, Luke, came on road tripping two years ago and he told this story about how uh, professional slash unprofessional Channing was when he played <laughs> for Luke in the Lakers at the end of his career. Um, how, how does Luke handle to hear that you say that you guys have the most jokesters and to know how Luke is, how does he handle you guys? Oh man, it, it, it depends on like the day, honestly. Like if we on a winning streak or we the one a few in the row and we joking a little bit, you know, he, he might throw a little jab in there or something. He might laugh a little bit, but man, let us be joking and we just lost the game. Oh man, no. he's coming no. in there. He cussing no. us out. Making sure we understand, we better lock into the field. We just got embarrassed. We, we supposed to be professional athletes. We are here joking. I mean, he he will go off if you're well, joking too and, much, and, especially and, during and, like film. Yeah, and one thing that you you and from he comes from the older school, right? Like not like oh. his first when he was a when he was a rookie. It was sorry, turn this off. When he was a when he was a uh, rookie. rookie, he had Carl Malone, Gary Payton. Uh, Kobe and Shaq. So like when you have veterans like that, when you have veterans like that, it's very uh, serious. They don't play. When you lose, the bus is quiet. The plane is quiet because yeah. like you're not supposed to lose. And so sometimes when you're around young teams, they're just there. They're happy to be there. They're happy to be playing games, you know? Uh, and so like they, it, it just, you got to establish how everything should be done and treated when you're playing that manner. Oh, I've been sure. on teams where if you lost, you you couldn't be on your phone. Like you couldn't talk on the phone. 
Yeah. They did it like, if we catch you on your phone, we're finding you. You'd be like, what? Oh, oh man. Okay. Wow. But then you realize, like, Luke in college, if we lost, Luke wouldn't talk to us at night. None of us. He wouldn't talk to us for hours, right? And we're like, me, I'm 30 minutes. I'm like, well, okay, well, what else is going on today? Luke, no. He's like watching film. He's figuring it. He's icing his knees and his ankles. He like just take care. Like Luke is that. Uh, yeah. he's, a, he's a competitor for sure. He's a yes. super competitor for sure. Yeah. That's and one of the main things I love about him for real. Like, yeah. you know, we step out there, you go in the war, he want to win just as bad as you do. So, <laughs> like, <laughs> this is hey, the thing. One, the one, day, gonna... one day he's going to turn, he's going to get his, you know, 50 wins. One day he's going to do that. And then you'll get to see a much, it's just, you, you almost have to be the, per like, you need to be the same person. But within that, you need to adjust based off what the roles need. When you got a veteran team that's winning 60, 60 games, 55 games, like you're not stressed about whether or not these guys take a loss the right way because the only way you win that much is if you take losses very badly, right. you get pissed off as a group, and then you go show up on the court. If anything, a coach's time at times when you're on a 55, 60 win team and teams feel like they have to win the championship, a coach's job then sometimes has to turn into guys, calm down. I know we lost a couple in a row. Don't stress. Right. But when yeah. you got a young team that's like lost six in a row, it's like, what do you guys think is funny? Ain't nothing yeah, funny here. Exactly. No, like, <laughs> nothing's funny. Nothing's funny. <laughs> that's right. A fact. Like it's, it's what you to smile. Take your teeth out. <laughs> teeth out and don't even smile just go that, that's that's one thing oh, about whoa. being young in the nba man you just be so happy to like so man, happy. i'm playing this guy i'm playing lebron tonight i got chris paul the next night you know i'm playing and you just like you just so happy for real just to be in that position you don't really understand when you first coming into the nba what it really takes to win like that mm -hmm. and i think Ooh. that's why vets are like extremely so important like my vet carl landry in philly oh, like man oh even when we was losing yeah, how Carl funny taught is he? me how to be a professional. Like, he, like yeah. man, I know we losing. You got tryouts for 29 other teams. Every time you step out there, they look at how you handle yourself. I told Carl you know, that. Me how to, you know, just taught me how to get myself together for real. Like, yeah. I mean, when I first came into the NBA, I was super happy go lucky. Like, I was yeah. super happy to see everybody. Like, man, you know, just like wide-eyed. He like, man, nah, listen, you a grown man. You professional. Get yourself together. You got to do this, this, thing. You know, just lay things out for me, man. Carl, it goes that's, quick. My, that's my dog. Yeah, Dang. Carl. Carl's great. We were he together was in Golden cold State in the fourth quarter. Yeah, oh, I hated. <laughs> he could have zero points in the fourth quarter. He got with sixteen. You're like, God oh, damn, Carl. Yeah, <laughs> a bucket. Buckets. Mid range buckets. bucket. Oh. Yeah, well, I had him when we were in Golden State together. That's the first year that Steph broke the three point record. Went to the postseason. He was balling. He was in. He was like the six man kind of off the bench a little bit, started a bunch, but he was Carl. Carl was balling. But, you know, especially being undersized power forward, like he told me the yeah. story. He was like, dude, do you realize that only like 20 or 30 percent of second round picks see a second contract? Right, like oh, he's told me the same thing. Yeah, the he's the one that told me exact thing. exact same thing, and it's true. A second round contract is a non guaranteed. It's this you got to make the team yeah. sometimes, and now it's different now because you're drafting like very young players that you're going to develop. So that might have changed. But back in the day, where it was first was guaranteed, second round non guaranteed. Yeah. Only and think about it, even in the second round, only about eighty percent of them make the team. Just because you were right. in second round, so it's like then you go even shorter to the amount of guys that get a that get a second contract. That's next level. This is my oh, moment sure. to brag on you coming from the Mid American Conference. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. you Mac. made it in this league. Mac. <laughs> McDonald's, oh, yeah. stand up, stand. We represent always, always representing. Oh, <laughs> Can you please go. like set these two straight? They just think because they went to University of Arizona that no one else matters. No uh, one no, else I'm, does I'm matter. taking BG University over anybody. BG. <laughs> I'm taking Toledo, so this is a conflict of boo, interest. But we 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 don't we don't recognize Toledo. <laughs> uh, it's I know. Like okay. okay, okay. Where does <laughs> no. the name Bowling Green come from? Because that's very confusing. You don't go bowling in the green grass. So what is that? No, but uh, you do like bowling, bowling, don't you? Bowling Green. I'm gonna be completely honest. I, I don't know where the name comes from for real. <laughs> Oh no, I, I I had never heard of it until they recruited me, honestly. 
What was the way in which you guys spoke about Toledo? Obviously, you couldn't say the word Toledo, yeah. right? Like, nah, what was like? Fuck Toledo. What? <laughs> Tuck Toledo. Fuck Toledo. Tuck Toledo. Tuck Toledo? Tuck Toledo. Yeah. Oh, I love always. it. Like that. <laughs> Tuck and we were always BGSU CKS. <laughs> <laughs> Like bowling is like a weight room. You couldn't wear orange. We couldn't wear brown. We couldn't say bowling green. You couldn't like, or it was punishment. Yeah, it was the same. It was the no same. Blue, that bad? Especially when we oh. the week we getting ready to play y'all. It, it got crazy. Yeah, wait, time. where's like, bowling green at? It's, it's literally in Ohio. And it's 20 minutes up 75. From yeah, 20 guys? minutes away from yeah. Toledo. So, so oh, you guys are like close, close to each other. Oh, yeah. Big time oh. Yeah, big time. I How many did you ever beat Toledo? <sighs> this I is never the thing too Toledo. because oh, you never beat Toledo. And I, I out of nine tries because I also saw the women in the MAC tournament three times. Um, I only beat them once, and it was probably the best game of my career. Like really? most memorable. Oh, you only beat Bowling What'd you have? One six time? points? Yeah. <laughs> Kidding? Yeah. First of all, yeah. first of all, so it's different for so us, our rivals because we're Arizona humble brag is whoever was the other best team in the conference. Because Arizona State, Arizona State, they've had some players, you know, James Harden, they've had some guys, Eddie Howes, come through there. But ultimately, in my three years, I never lost to Arizona State. So I was 6-0 and versus them. So it was like, and they were 90 minutes away. So as far as our rival, it was like comical. It was just like, you guys are cute. Like, you them guys, in the tournament. I was, you know, for them, them one it time. was the biggest game. You lost them one time? One time. Yeah, I got because I remember calling Luke and giving him shit. I'm like, dude, sick. you were a freshman, right? When you I went back home, year? yeah, freshman year. <laughs> yeah, I was like, dude, how'd you guys lose to Arizona State? Oh, was man. Early. Yeah, I did come was... across. Sorry to change subjects really quick. Okay. Uh, this weekend, um, this past weekend, was the Hall of Fame induction, and I believe I came across KG was someone that you looked up to, Rashawn. Ah, it's my favorite player. My favorite player growing up. Yeah. Um, what was it? Did and you, man, get a, like, you got a chance to play against KG then. I played against KG one time uh, in Philly. And like, I remember calling all my friends, like, man, I, I was like, I'm going to play tonight. I think we had a couple guys hurt. And I'm like, man, I'm going to get in the game tonight man, playing against KG. I'm going to talk some trash to him, but I want to see <laughs> no, if he go crazy. Do don't do that. I was like, I want to see if he go crazy over. He will. And so I had I had this plan, but I, I had this plan to do all it. Like I was gonna just like I don't know, a layup or a rebound. I was just gonna say something. And man, when I got out there and he has this like all those like a force field around the ball goes to me. Like it's very, very intimidating. Yeah. And man, I was just looking at him like, man, this is Kevin Garnett. And I ran up and down the court a couple of times, just looking at him kind of in awe that I was on the court with him. And then I finally say, oh, wait, let me snap back. I got I to gotta get back into the game. I got I to gotta say That's something that to call him. Lounge, that call lounge, you got to call lounge, you got to. Yeah, <laughs> so I, like, I got to say something to him. And then by the time it's time for me to, like, you know, I am got my mind right, ready to do something, I get pulled out the game. Oh! <laughs> so, and I was looking like, man, he got to put me back in. He got to put me back in. And I think I went, I did go back in during the but game, but I don't think Kevin played anymore. I think he, he was done for the night. So I didn't, I didn't get a chance to match up with him again. So I missed my chance. Uh, but and during that game, like I'm with TJ McConnell, and oh. he, KG gets to talking like crazy to TJ, yeah. like, and I remember <laughs> just looking on the bench like, man, I wish those be talking, so talking, talk back. Like I, that was always been like my, I always wanted to like just get into a, a tussle with Kevin Garnett just because of like the intensity he played with for real. Like I always looked up to it. Yeah. And I wanted to get a chance to step to it for real. Ah, uh, you see, if you stay <laughs> ready, you ain't gotta get ready. Exactly. You started getting ready. I'm my favorite you human. Get ready I will say that it was too late. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, nah, thanks. Yeah. Wait, so you nah. never had a chance to like actually meet him? Talk to him? I've never I've never met him. No, nah, I never got a chance to meet him. Uh like I, I we shook hands after that game. I know I told him I looked up to him and everything like that. But you know, that was you know, we had a time like that. It was the only time I really got a chance to talk to him. Yeah, Man. Lockley and Kevin Garnett was one of the hardest guys to do anything with. Pass, dribble, shoot. Like, he knew your plays. He's talking to you reckless. That's <laughs> where I went up because he is ridiculous. But we've gone back and forth. Obviously, he's a Hall of Famer. He's ridiculous. But Tim Duncan was my guy. Tim Duncan was the guy mm. I looked up to playing. And I was like, man, that shit is Tim Duncan. And the next thing you know, this dude elbows me in my stomach. 
and, and dunks on me. And I'm like, oh, I don't remember him doing this. Like that San Antonio's first team was ridiculous. He was a monster trying to guard. Oh man, for sure. I don't, I don't think I had, I'm trying, like I had my favorite players growing up. Jordan gave you 40, Richard. No, but no, I'm, I'm not talking about like lots. Of, yeah. Braun gave me 55. Like it happens. Like who gives a shit about that? I'm giving Braun 40 too. No big deal. But my, my, but my, my thing was, I was trying to think if there was a player that I actually got to a space, Rashawn just left. He didn't give a shit. Um, that's my bad. Yeah. Somebody was trying to call me. My fault. Uh, no, I'm trying to think about like, was there a player that like I was kind of eyes wide because I had done the Jordan camp. So we all knew like the Jordan, like we'd met him. I'd been around him. I'd worked out with him because he was with the wizards at the time when they drafted Kwame Brown. So like Jordan wasn't like a guy that I was awestruck of. Uh, I wasn't a Kobe guy from like, you know, he was so young and he wasn't quite, even though he's winning championships when I got to the league, he still mm. was like, he wasn't like that generation's Jordan yet, right? Like the guys mm. now look at him like he was their generation's Jordan. Like he was only a few years older than me, even though he was a stud. I would probably say Shaq. that. No, there was really, there was nobody. Like everybody, you were excited. Like you said, Rashawn, I was a I feel like that tells you everything you need to yeah. know about Richard. <laughs> no, I, was a happy, I was a happy-go-lucky dude. Like I was happy to be there. I was excited to see everybody, but there wasn't yeah. like that one person that like stood out to me. He also so, was playing on a championship level team with Jason Kidd and Kenny Martin and Kerry Kittle. That is so true. Like you, can't, you don't got time to be like, Oh man, Jordan, let me get an autograph. You're like, yeah. oh shit, Jason Kidd has told me to buy. I've, I've, I've told, again, the, I've told this story. I've told this story before, but the first time I ever guarded a person in an actual NBA game, that was probably one of the kind of moments for me because it was like I go in for Kerry Kittles. I'm coming off the bench. We're playing against the Knicks, and Byron Scott goes, uh, "All right, Rich, uh, you you, uh, you go get Kerry. You're, you're guarding Latrell." And the only thing I could think of is like the motherfucker that choked his coach. <laughs> that was the only thing I could think of. I kid you not. So like, not that you go into the game scared, but like I'm 20 years old. And like, the only thing I know about Latrell is one, he's really fucking good. He's got a mean two hand fuck cock back and he choked the shit out of his coach. And I'm like, all right, here we go. Here Guess, we we're go. Here. Guess this is real. Guess this is, <laughs> Guess this, this is what it is. And so that, that was probably the one kind of moment that I was just like, this shit has got real very quickly. Oh, <laughs> you got Go it. Ahead, you I was go? just going to say, growing up in Illinois, were you a Michael Kin, MJ Kid? Say it one more time. Growing up in Illinois, were you an MJ Kid? Like, oh, was MJ sure. your guy? Like, yeah. Yeah. In Chicago land area, Michael Jordan is yeah. everywhere like, in the culture. You don't have a choice. Yeah. Like, my dad, when it comes, you can't talk about no other basketball player but Michael Jordan. I mean, because like the conversation has to start and end there. Yeah. So like, <laughs> there's a big Michael Jordan fan growing up for sure. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, well, yeah, here's my question. Since you played your them this year, last question. This is my last question. I'll let everyone else talk since you have stupid questions. Right? You played Jokic and you played Embiid. Mm. Who is MVP this year? For me, is is Joel Joel Embiid. Like, I mean, Jokic, it's tough because Jokic, he does so much, you know, with, you know, he got the passing on lock. He's one of the best passers in the game in general, you know, and he does so much for that team. But when Joel gets the ball, like for me, when he gets the ball on the low block and he makes the determination that I'm going to get to the rim and I'm, and rim and I'm going to score, it's really right. nothing you can do. You know, there's nothing you can do. It's not too many guys I can say, like, I'm on the island. It's like, send a double, send a double. Like, it's not too many guys I'm going to say that. And Joel, it's like when he just makes up his mind. And then he has footwork. He can he can shoot fadeaways, hook shots, has touch, all of that. But it's just that simple determination. He makes up his mind. He's going to get to the rim and score. He's going to score the ball or you're going to foul. It's going to be one or the other. Like, he's, it's like he has the game on the string to me. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. a good question, Channing. Yeah, look at you, Channing. Should yeah. we end on that? Thank you. End on I that? Do do that well, I was just going to ask, Rashawn, do you have any um, any charities, anything you're working on, anything that you want to promote? We like to do that here on Road Trippin for our guests. Oh, yes. I have my Stay 20 Tune organization, and 
our goal is to make sure we provide, you know, just kind of the eyes and things of that sort to like the guys who aren't really recruited as much. Cause mm -hmm. you know, growing up, I really didn't have a lot of eyes on me, a lot of offers, things of that sort. And I didn't really know where to go to get opportunities. Like I didn't, I heard about camps and things of that sort, but I really didn't have an opportunity to get there. Didn't get invites, things of that sort, just cause I, nobody really had seen me. So the state 22 and organization, we just focus on athletes that kind of fly under the radar who have the talent level equal to guys that you hear about all throughout the world, had their own brands already in high school, which is crazy to think about, you know, guys who, you know, really don't really understand, you know, how to navigate, but who have the same talent to get to the place they want to go. We just want to help show them the way. Yeah. You know, that's dope. You got to make sure you tag us, let us know. We'll make all sure we'll, we'll check it out. So then that way, you know, shoot us some stuff or if you guys are doing something, events, anything that you guys are doing, tag us in it. We'll repost it. We'll repost it from our individuals, like stuff like that, just to help, you know, right. You know, not raise awareness, but let people know what you guys are doing out there. Most definitely will. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, Most no definitely will. 100%, man. 100%. Um, we have one job. We always uh, thank our friends over at Camus for always supplying us, um, keeping us fueled here at Road Trippin. So we want to get you a couple bottles um, to your home. Um, whether you drink okay. vino or not, it's an awesome gift. Um, yeah. so we're oh, I, I'll definitely it. take it. Okay, good. Yeah. We're going to send you a couple. Be on that vino. Um, yeah. whoever, <laughs> Tag road tripping. <laughs> whoever um, yes, sir. whoever yes, connected sir. us to you, I'm just going to have Gina reach out to them and get your address. So we'll send it your okay. way. Um, and lastly, just make sure that your mom knows that Richard is very harmless. Yes. Oh, he's I, I, tell, I your mom I respect it. tell your mom I respect we, it. And I think it's awesome. What was funny, we had the whole conversation after after that happened. We had a whole conversation about it. Like, mom, you have to understand, I haven't shot threes in probably three or four years. Yeah. This has been my role. Yeah. You know, so like, come on, like I said, our mom, she sees something, she just attacks, and I have to let her know, okay, now this is where this person's I mean, coming from. Well, and it's like, look, you know there's the, like I'm never, if I'm going to be critical of a player, I'm gonna say something that they already know, right? That yeah. they already know. Like, or I'm going to be just super sarcastic and dry and I'm just messing around. I'm never like, like, you know, when Shaq and Chuck and those guys no, are Shaq and Chuck, those guys like, are MVPs. Yeah. But when they hit you with a, I just didn't think that you raised your game to another level. I'm like, dog, I ain't talking to no player. <laughs> no, nah, thanks. Ever. I am not that. That's not my role. That's not who I am. That's not what I enjoy. That's not how I like to do it. But those guys can. They're MVPs. That's fine. Yeah. That's not my role. I'll just use sarcasm and jokes and lighthearted stuff. Like, yeah, maybe that's not the shot. That's a preseason shot. You don't want to shoot yeah. that shot. Right? Yeah, it's, it was funny to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. As long as it's funny to you, that's all that matters. Man. And your mom's the real MVP. Yeah, she, she is. Mom, yeah. Moms always, can get away always. with it. Hey, listen. Ask mom. I didn't engage her. I was like, yeah, okay, I'm leaving. Get back in my life. Mom's out of this one. No, no, no. I'm good. Rashawn, right, best of luck with the upcoming summer, obviously. Yeah, for sure, good. man. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you Bye. so much. Love your game. Okay. All right. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Appreciate you guys. Thanks for having me again. Bye, right, Alex. Yeah. It's another edition of Road Trippin'. Hey, Road Trippin' fam. We are excited to let you know that Road Trippin' is proud to be presented by FanDuel. Never played NBA Daily Fantasy on FanDuel before? Well, check this out. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Why should you play on FanDuel NBA? Well, for one, it is easy to use when it comes to their app. What's not to love about that? But also, for example, they offer different and unique contests across sports in relation to your skill level. Oh yeah, and get this, you can play for big prizes, single game contests for the biggest national matches, and enter contests for as low as five cents. That's right, five cents. Simply incredible. So again, let's recap. Right now, FanDuel is offering up to a $500 bonus instantly when you make your first deposit with a 20% deposit match. Enter URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping to play now and get your deposit bonus. That's URL FanDuel.com backslash road tripping so they know we sent you. FanDuel, more ways to win.